This video will discuss activity in liquid-liquid solutions. So if we want to know the chemical potential of a given component in a liquid solution, that is given by the chemical potential of the pure liquid of that component at the same temperature and pressure, plus the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of the vapor pressure of that component divided by the vapor pressure of the pure liquid of that component at the same temperature and pressure. So if a solution is ideal, the vapor pressure of that component in solution is equal to its mole fraction times the vapor pressure of the pure component. So for ideal solutions, the chemical potential of each component is equal to the chemical potential of a pure liquid of that component plus RT times the natural log of the mole fraction of that component. So this is a very neat equation. It's very easy to work with. It's easy to get what the mole fraction is. Uh, the gas constant and temperature are easy to find. So the perturbation to the chemical potential is a very easy quantity for us to deal with for ideal solutions. So what we want now is a replacement for the mole fraction that we can use for non-ideal solutions such that we get a simple expression that looks like this. So for a non-ideal solution, we're going to have that the chemical potential of a given component is equal to the chemical potential of the pure liquid of that component, so thus far the same, plus the gas constant times temperature times the natural log of the mole fraction, so that's the ideal part thus far. Then we're going to add a series of terms. So we're going to have terms that have corrections for various powers of the mole fraction. So plus alpha times mole fraction squared, plus beta times mole fraction cubed, etc., etc., all the way up until we have a sufficient number of terms that we have uh, this quantity to sufficiently desired accuracy. So this alpha, beta, etc., are all just constant parameters that we use to make this uh, equation work. So the vapor pressure of our component then is going to equal its mole fraction times the vapor pressure of the pure component times the exponential of alpha times mole fraction squared plus beta times mole fraction cubed, etc., etc., for as many terms as we want to include. And this is going to be defined as the activity of that component times the vapor pressure of pure component I. So here what we're doing is we're defining the quantity activity such that a activity is equal to the mole fraction of the component times the exponential of alpha mole fraction squared plus beta mole fraction cubed, et cetera, et cetera. So all the non-ideal behavior, which is encapsulated by these extra coefficients, we're taking the exponential of all of those uh, things, wrapping that in there multiplying times a mole fraction and calling that activity. So for an ideal solution, all of these coefficients would be zero. This exponential would be e to the zero, which would be one, and the activity would equal the mole fraction. So for an ideal solution, we have that the activity is just equal to the vapor pressure of the, of the component divided by the vapor pressure of the pure liquid component just as it is for Raoul's law. So we know that for even non-ideal solutions, we're going to have that the activity approaches the mole fraction as the mole fraction of the, of the component approaches 1, because uh, Raoul's law is obeyed for all uh, liquids as their mole fraction approaches 1. And the activity is going to approach the mole fraction times the Henry's law constant divided by the pure vapor pressure of component I as the mole fraction of I approaches zero. So this is for non-ideal cases. For ideal cases, the Henry's law constant is just the vapor pressure of component I. So for ideal solutions, the activity is just the mole fraction at all, at all mole fractions. But for non-ideal solutions, we have this type of relationship from Henry's law from the previous video. So the chemical potential of our component in solution is going to equal the 
chemical potential of the pure liquid of that substance plus RT times the natural log of the activity of that given the activity of that given species. So there we have our equation which is nice and simple for the chemical potential of an arbitrary uh, species in a non-ideal solution. So if this looks reminiscent of what we did for fugacity versus pressure when we were looking at the Gibbs energy of gases for non-ideal versus ideal gases, that's because it's basically the same kind of idea. Fugacity is a replacement for pressure in non-ideal gases, and activity is a replacement for mole fraction in non-ideal solutions. So the similar types of nomenclature that we defined there for fugacity, where we had the fugacity coefficient, here we define the activity coefficient, gamma sub i, which is equal to the activity divided by the mole fraction of that component, where if we have an ideal solution, the activity is the activity coefficient is going to equal 1 for all components at all mole fractions of those components in the mixture.